Hey everyone, Phil from Member Prototypes here. So, we've posted this on Twitter before and we have a YouTube Shorts showing our process and our technique for removing parts off of the build plate for resin 3D prints, but I wanted to make a longer form video to explain why this technique is so useful and then also to kind of show the process in a bit more detail, have some narration explaining it, uh, and then also an opportunity to show you the tools that we use. So I'll show some clips of me removing some parts off the build plate with our technique and with our tools. So before I take the print out of the printer, something that's really important for having clean resin 3D printing is you want to minimize the amount of time that you touch parts with resin on it. Basically, our process eliminates the need for ever touching parts that have resin. And what that means is that we get to keep our, keep our entire workspace clean. As soon as you touch a part with resin, you know, you're not gonna take your gloves off and then put a new pair on later. It ends up just getting onto your gloves and then your gloves touch your tools. Now your tools have resin on it and then your tools go on your workbench and you start touching things, you touch your phone and you just get resin everywhere. So we've designed our process, our technique, our tools around never having to touch resin ever. We'll basically take parts out, pop them off into a basket or a tray and then we'll put that into our wash and then we'll take that out let it air dry and then once the parts are dry then we'll take them off the supports or we'll cure them and process them but we never touch anything that's wet or as that has resin on it so that's just like the preliminary spiel on like how we like to do things but let's take this part out I'll do it with one hand just so I can zoom in on the camera. But basically you take your side cutters and you go and you find a corner or it doesn't have to be a corner. You can find anything, anywhere that you can fit your cutter in and you just lightly squeeze and you can see that that edge has already released. And then I'll go ahead and do that on all corners of this part. And you can see that, yeah, the edges have started to release. So if you don't use the side cutters, it's actually really hard to get a spatula underneath and try to like release it, right? Like right now I'm pushing and it just won't go. And this is where people, A, don't have the right thin spatula like this tool, but B, they start hammering and chiseling or they put the thing in the freezer and do all kinds of ridiculous things. Use use X-Acto knives or like really sharp tools and then cut themselves. You don't need to do any of that. You use a side cutter to release the corners and then you take a thin flexible tool like our scraper here and then you go under the corner that you've released and then you just work. And you just slowly work under the part. I've released this mostly. I'm going to put it down because I don't want these parts to fall on the floor. You just work at it and then eventually your part will just come off. So the nice thing is that with these two tools, you can basically use them to move your part into your basket or into your wash station. <clears throat> Because this tool is so long, it makes a pretty good platform. And then if you use your side cutters to just hold on to the raft, you can just transport this anywhere you want. All right, so now we'll show another example on our Form 3L. We've printed a bunch of nice clear parts that we need to take off. And so the process will be exactly the same. We'll get our side cutters in there. Snip. And you can see that 
that entire section here just kind of came off. And so now you just get this guy in here, slide it under, use this to transport into our basket, and then our basket just goes straight in the wash. Another great use of this tool is for FDM. You have a fail like here, for some reason our extruder jammed and it had only laid down like one or two layers. So with this tool, we can, we can really kind of get into a corner and then just work our way underneath. And because this tool is so thin and so flexible, it makes cleaning failures like this really easy. Whereas it's not as easy to do with big bulky spatulas. Yeah. I hope that was useful and maybe helps you with your resin 3D printing. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, leave a comment down below if you wanna have a discussion. If you also want to use or buy the tools that I showed in this video, we will be launching it on our store as the ultimate toolkit for resin 3D printing. So this is a genuine Heiko side cutter. So very high quality, it'll last you forever. This scraper here is uh, specially imported from Japan. <clears throat> so it's got a pretty long stainless steel blade that's actually been coated with some, some type of nonstick fluoride coating. Uh, and it's, it's great. It's like the best tool that I have ever used in, with 3D printing in general. Uh, it's such a fantastic tool and it's really transformed our entire process ever since we first got it years ago. So yeah, main Japan, very high quality, and then a genuine Heiko side cutter. We'll be selling these as a pair, as the ultimate toolkit on our store. So I'll leave a link in the description down below if you do want to go and grab one. Um, you know, but if not, if you already own a pair of side cutters and you have some kind of spatula, give what I showed a try and hopefully it works, but these will be available if you want them. So anyways, yeah, hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.